Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And from Hollywood, here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, your railroads, through the Association of American Railroads, present the romantic musical success, The New Moon, starring the host of our series, Gordon McRae, and two very famous guests, Miss Nadine Connor and Mr. Rudy Valley. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the entire production is set to the music of Carmen Dragon's Orchestra, and brought to you by the American Railroads, that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gordon McRae helping to bring you another in our series of musical successes. And tonight, it's the famous Sigmund Romberg hit, The New Moon. In the role of the Lady Marianne, you will hear the charming Metropolitan Opera Soprano, Miss Nadine Connor. And as Alexander, Marianne's naive and amusing bond servant, we present that favorite of radio and screen, Mr. Rudy Valley. I, too, play a bond servant, a, a swashbuckling lad named Robert Misson, who sails to romance and high adventure on a ship called the New Moon. New Orleans, the year of our Lord, 1791. A dream of freedom and equality had caught spark and was beginning to glow in hearts that knew what to do with it. Men of France, here meeting with us tonight in this New Orleans tavern are bond servants like myself, sailors, craftsmen, scholars, all good men and true who have come to meet in secret because they want to live as free men and govern themselves. As most of you know, I was once considered a member of the French aristocracy, and I am possibly even more aware than you of the stupid cruelty of a society that tells the starving who beg for bread to eat cake. My friends, the day of kings is at its sunset. The sun is rising for men like you and me, who count freedom more important than life. If you come with me tonight, the plans are made for us to commandeer a ship and sail to the Caribbean to an island called the Isle of Pines. There we shall found a colony for the strong of purpose, the brave, the stout-hearted. Are you with me? Good. Give me some men who are stout-hearted men who will fight for the right they adore. Start me with ten who are stout-hearted men and I'll soon give you ten thousand more. Shoulder to shoulder and bolder and bolder they grow as they go to the fore. Then there's nothing in the world can halt for my plan. When stout-hearted men can stick together man to man. Who have dreams if you act, they will be yours. To turn your dreams to a fact, it's up to you. If you have the soul and the spirit, never fear it, you'll see it through. A strong obey when a strong man shows them the way. Shoulder to shoulder and bolder and bolder, they grow as they go to the fore. Then there's nothing in the world can hold for my plan. When stout hearted men can stick together.
We'll gather under the wharf at midnight. One ship in the harbor is loaded with supplies and ready to sail with the tide. I believe many of you are already members of a crew, the New Moon. The New Moon? Well, the New Moon is a bride ship, round for Martinique. Well, we need brides to start a colony, don't we? <laughs> All right, go about your duties quietly until midnight and speak no word of this. If we are found out, all hope is lost. Come, Alexander. Yes, Robert. Oh, take your last look at New Orleans, Alexander. By tomorrow, we'll be on the open sea. Julie is going to go with me. Alexander, when we left France, you told me you wanted to escape into a man's world. Well, myself, I like a man's world with women in it. <laughs> Alexander, you haven't a brain in your head. I know. I've had complaints about it before. Where are we going now? Going back to the house. Back to the house? Have you lost your senses? You know that the king's detectives, Rebo, is at the house. Have you forgotten the king has declared you a traitor and that Rebo is in New Orleans for the express purpose of returning you to France and the guillotine? Rebo has never seen me. All he knows is that I am a bond servant. He doesn't know which bond servant. And besides, he only arrived from France today. He will hardly trouble himself tonight with a ball going on. Look, I have a right to be stupid. I was born that way. But people expect more of you. It's a masked ball. In a costume and mask, it won't be much of a trick to slip in and join the guests. I'll have a dance with her before the midnight hour. Oh, Robert, I wish you wouldn't do things like this. Every time I think about it, my streaks turn yellow. Alexander, where's your stout heart? I'm a stout-hearted coward. Well, that's ridiculous. I know, but being a coward is so comfortable. No one ever expects anything of you. And you live so much longer. You'll never live to be old. I don't care if I live to be old so long as I can be young with... Marianne, I want to love you. Oh, Marianne, I want to love you, though I'm dead without a head. <laughs> She's beautiful. Oh, all women are beautiful. That's the only justification for their existence. But she's beyond words, beyond description. She's... I know, I've heard this before. I know just what you'd like to say to Marianne. Oh, do you? Yes, listen. Marianne, I want to love you. I'll repeat it every day, dear. Marianne, I want to love you. It's a simple thing to say, dear. Were there more praises to sing and phrases to ring, I'd sing them to you. Let others doubt them who will, I would be still believing them true. And though you may never love me, I will never cease to woo you. Though you're flying high above me, I will try to fly up to you. I know the worry and strife that come with a wife, but here is a man who'd gladly give up his life to marry you, Marianne. Marianne, I want to love. I repeat it every day. Marianne, I want to love. It's a simple thing to say. I know the worry and strife that come with a wife, but here is a man who'd gladly give up his life. Who'd give up his life to marry? To marry? To marry? To marry? To Alex, we're almost to the door. She might hear you. Don't interrupt me when I'm singing so well. It's a simple thing to say, dear. Alexander, the... is that you singing? Yes, Mistress Marianne. How dare you sing like that under my window? I beg your pardon, Mistress, if the song offends you. Oh, I don't mind the song, Alexander. If you only wouldn't sing it through your nose. <laughs> yes, I've had complaints about that before, too. <laughs> Good evening, my mistress. Oh, good evening, Robert. Alexander, uh, you're needed in the kitchen. The guests are beginning to arrive. Yes, my lady. My time is your time. <laughs> oh, uh, Lady Mary Ann, uh, a word with you, please. Oh, yes, Monsieur Ribot. Uh, come into the library. So, that's the man who wants to send me to the guillotine. Mm, sing through my nose, do I? I'll take my chance with Monsieur Ribot. Just because she doesn't have any adenoids. 
Come, Alexander, quick. I want you to help me dress for the ball. Alexander! Oh, Julie! Oh, Alexander! Oh, Julie! Oh, Alexander! Oh, Julie! Look, would you two mind continuing this stimulating conversation later? We have so much to say to each other. I thought we would have met at midnight at the wharf. I didn't know you were coming back. Robert insisted on in coming back. Yes, I have one thing left to do. One farewell yet to make. With me. <laughs> Will the Lady Marianne grant me the favor of this dance? Oh, it will be my pleasure, monsieur. Oh, I shall remember this dance as long as I live, Lady Marianne. Have we danced before, monsieur? Only in my dreams. So you are a dreamer, too. Are you a dreamer, Lady Marianne? Oh, very much of one. And my dream is a very old-fashioned dream, monsieur. It has been the dream of women since time began. In this year of 1792, our conventions have been thrown all of you. And I know I'm out of date when I seek one faith, one faith for love true. To be really in the fashion today, you must have a dozen moves in your sway. But somehow I don't believe in the modern plan. To wait for just one man One kiss, one man To save it all One man for him alone One word, one bar And nothing more To tell him I'm his Come, Lady Marianne, walk with me in the garden. Do I know you, sir? There is something in your manner that is familiar. And yet, yet it seems to me if we had met before, I would recognize you immediately, no matter what your disguise. Here, through this door, Lady Marianne. Oh, look at that moon, Lady Marianne, a new moon. Turn around and wish over your left shoulder. For you, too. There. What did you wish? What men always wish for, the impossible, the unattainable. What did you wish for? I think the same as you. Come, take my arm. Let us walk through the garden and pretend that we have walked here every night for, oh, say four months. Why four months? Because then, then you would surely know that the things I want to say to you are not just the pretty compliments one pays a lady at a ball. What are the things that you would say, monsieur? My heart is aching for someone And you are that someone I am intrigued by your story And I believe this is true Oh, monsieur, monsieur, how is it that a stranger can almost seem like the answer to a dream? 
Is it you I've waited for? Is yours the voice I had almost despaired of hearing? I know the end of your story That someone is you Wanting you Every day I am wanting you Every night I am longing to You know. Well, this afternoon, when Monsieur Ribot told me that one of my bondsmen was a nobleman, I knew immediately who it was. You are Robert Misson, are you not? Yes. Yes, I am Robert Misson. Thank you, mademoiselle. Thank you. Man, seize this gentleman. Seize Robert Misson. All right, Monsieur Ribot. Let me go. Well, Monsieur Misson, at last. Your ladyship, I am in your debt forever. You have helped me capture one of the most dangerous men in New Orleans. Her ladyship was indeed most clever. Her ladyship is a faithful subject of her king. She received a royal order to assist in the capture of the traitor, Robert Misson. Congratulations, mademoiselle. You made a fool of me, and you used my love to betray me. But you just may have betrayed yourself as well. Goodbye, Mistress Marianne. Robert, listen to me. Come, Monsieur Ribot. I am your prisoner. Let's be done with this business. Follow me, men. And be careful that he doesn't escape. Oh, Robert! In this world you were all that I adore. Fool! 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 In just a moment, the second act of The New Moon will be brought to you by the American Railroads. First, let me ask you this question. Have you ever realized how directly the service of our railroads on the land is connected with the operation of the ships of our Navy at sea? Well, to the men who are responsible for building, maintaining, and operating those ships, the connection is very real and vital. That's why Admiral Louis Denfeld, Chief of Naval Operations of the United States Navy, has pointed out, and I quote, that land transportation is as vital to our Navy as water transportation. And he added, quoting again, most of the land transportation that is so essential to the Navy is performed by the railroads. 
What is true of the Navy, as described by Admiral Denfeld, is true of every other part of our national defense. And it is equally true of the peacetime commerce by which we all live. For America's basic transportation runs on rails. And now back to The New Moon, starring Nadine Connor, Rudy Valley, and your host, Gordon McRae. Come in. Monsieur Ribot? Yes? The captain of the New Moon sends his compliments. Would like to see you in his cabin. Oh, uh, thank you. I'll come at once. I say, who's singing? The members of the crew, sir. Oh? Here you are, Monsieur Ribot. Go right in. Well... Good day, Monsieur Ribot. Misson, how did you get out of the brig? What are you doing in the captain's quarters? Where is Captain Duval? A regrettable accident in New Orleans just before the ship left port. Something uh, fell on his head. And since he was unable to sail, it was decided that I should be captain in his place. Who decided? Why, I decided. I and my crew. Your crew? Yes, every member of the crew that now mans the new moon is a follower of mine, Monsieur Ribot. Why, you pirate, you bandit, without a doubt, this is the most brazen... We're bound for an uninhabited island in the Caribbean, Monsieur Ribot, where we intend to set up a colony. A colony in the Caribbean? Yes. And what do you intend to do about the Lady Marianne? The Lady Marianne? Yes, yeah, she's on board this ship. On board this ship? Well, that's impossible. Oh. Captain Duval brought her on board. There had been an understanding between them for some time. They uh, planned to be married in Paris on this trip. Ma oh, I see. Yes. So perhaps you'd better return the ship to New Orleans, unless you want your island invaded by Captain Duval and the entire French fleet. First, they'll have to find our island, and I'll take that chance. You may return to your quarters, Monsieur Ribot. I see no need to confine you to the brig. Oh, thank you. Good day, Monsieur Misson. Robert! 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 We're in trouble. Call the stout-hearted, the brave, the fearless. Call everyone. I know. Marianne's on board, Alexander. Ribot just told me. She's on deck with Julie. Come on. What a day. Look at that sea. Oh, it's enough to make a man shiver his timbers. Yes, there they are, all right, standing by the rail. Oh, Julie. Julie, last night. The sky was blue and high above. The moon was new.
I'm afraid your lover is far from here, Lady Marianne. Oh, Robert! Alexander! Julie! Oh, Alexander! Oh, Julie! Lady Marianne, have you been informed that I am in command of this ship now? You are in command of this ship? Yes. What? what where is Captain Duval? In New Orleans with a slight headache. Oh, no, Robert. He wouldn't go out with another girl so soon. And where is this ship bound? For an island in the Caribbean to found a colony. And uh, you are at complete liberty to start swimming home any time you choose. It must make you feel very triumphant to have won your vengeance against a woman, Monsieur Misson. You are completely contemptible. Good day. Good day, your ladyship. I'll see you later, Alexander. I'm glad you gave her a piece of my mind at last. <laughs> Sadness and bitterness are melancholy companions, Alexander. And they are all she has left me. Love came to me, gay and tender. Love came to me, sweet surrender. Love came to me in bright romantic splendor. Fickle was she, faithful never. Fickle was she, and clever so it was. Passions that thrill love and lift you high to heaven are the passions that kill love and let you fall to hell. So ends the story. Softly as in an evening sunset. That gave you glory will take it all I suppose it's a lesson that every man must learn. Alexander. Oh, Alexander, darling. Julie. Oh, Julie, darling. Alexander. Julie. Doesn't life ever get monotonous for you two? <laughs> Why should it? She's completely wrapped up in me, and so am I. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt this happy scene. <laughs> but I'm afraid I have work for you to do, Alexander. Goodbye for the moment, my heart. My sweet... Oh, I'm such a devil with women. All right, you devil with women. Do you think you can bring yourself up to earth enough to call the men on deck for me? I'll be at it at once. Good. I'll have them on deck practically at once. No. 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 No, no, I don't want her. I don't want. I'm, I'm through with her. No, no, I'm through with her. Dreams are vain. I've awakened to find that love is nowhere near me. Every day I am wanting you. 
In this world you are all that I adore. Robert, Robert, they're on deck. What? Oh, oh, Alexander. The men are on deck, and the girls, too. They're waiting for you to talk to them. All right, all right. Men! Men, within a few days, we will be at the Isle of Pines. And we will build our homes and set up our government as we have planned. And the Isle of Pines will be the Isle of Free Men. <laughs> and since we must establish homes, I want every woman on the ship to marry as soon as we land. <laughs> From now on, you are living in a democracy. As in all governments of free men, the worth of that democracy is up to you, the people who comprise it. All right, to your stations, men. Robert, how can you trick them like that? Sailors, petty officers, bond servants. You know it can't work. It can work, and it will. And you'll see that it will work, Marianne. And who am I to marry? Anyone you want. Thank you so much. Good day, Monsieur Misson. Marianne. What do you want? I remember every little thing you used to do. I'm so lonely. Every road I walk along, I've walked along with you. No wonder I am lonely. Bye, Marianne. Just after the first act of tonight's show, we were talking about Admiral Louis Denfeld, Chief of Naval Operations of the United States Navy and what he said about how our Navy's needs lands transportation, most of which is provided by railroads. Looking to the future, the Admiral said, and I quote, From the standpoint of national security, the readiness of the railroads is equal in importance to the readiness of the Navy. End of quotation. To meet such a responsibility, to be in readiness for emergency, the railroads have to do their daily jobs as they come along. But they have to do more. They must think ahead, Plan ahead, spend ahead for progress and improvement. That's what the railroads have done and are continuing to do. That's why they were able to meet the demands of defense in the Second World War. That's why they are today turning out so much more transportation service than in the years just after the First World War and doing it more dependably and more efficiently. That's why railroads today would be better able to meet the impact of a national emergency than they were nine years ago when war broke out in Europe. But what has been done is not enough. If the railroads are to meet fully the day-by-day -day demands of agriculture, industry, and commerce, and to be found adequate to national needs in a time of crisis, two things are essential. The first is that railroads shall have a chance to secure the materials and equipment needed both for daily operations and upkeep now, and for the improvements and expansion which railroads need to make and want to make for the future. And the second is that railroads shall have a chance to earn revenues in line with today's costs, earnings which will enable them to make the improvements which always will be needed to meet the needs of a growing nation. <laughs> Railroad Hour show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. (laughs) 
And now we return to The New Moon, starring Nadine Connor, Rudy Valley, and your host, Gordon McRae. And high above, the moon was new, and so was love. Please sit down, Marianne. Monsieur Ribot, I do not know why you have come to my house with Robert Misson, but I... I don't know why you insisted that I come here with you, Monsieur Ribot. Marianne and I have nothing to say to each other. But Marianne is the one unmarried woman on the island. You said every woman must be married. Well, I, I made an exception of her. Oh? It seemed unfair to my men to ask any of them to take her. Thank you for your gallantry, Monsieur Misson. <laughs> you built this cabin for Marianne. Does a man who really hates a woman build a home for her? She had to have a place to live. And after all, it's my fault that she's on the island. <laughs> It's also your fault that I'm on the island, yet you made me build my own cabin. <laughs> May I ask the meaning of all this, Monsieur Ribot? Yes. I, I want to tell you a story. <laughs> now, really... Ribot, I have a great many things to do. No, no, no. This is an important story. Particularly important to me because uh, I am the villain of the piece. Now, once upon a time, not too long ago, a man danced with a girl at a ball. He kissed her. They fell in love. Monsieur Ribot. Monsieur Ribot, yes. That's the name of the villain. An aristocrat, a most despicable fellow. It was he who led the young man to believe that the girl had conspired in his arrest, when all the time that same girl was ready to move heaven and earth to save him. Ribot, is this oh, true? Oh, please. What is the use of telling him now? Marianne, I, I told Robert that you came on board the New Moon to go to France with Captain Duval and marry him there. You did that? It... It isn't true? Oh, of course it isn't true. I came on board with Julie to try to help you escape. Marianne. Uh, isn't it a pretty story? At the very moment when the boy and the girl thought they were hopelessly apart, they find themselves together on a moonlight night with only one wish now, that the extra gentleman should say good night. <laughs> oh. And so, good night. Marianne. One kiss, one girl to save it for One love for her alone One word, one vow and nothing more To tell her I'm her own One magic night within his own Now at last, this colony will be all that I ever dreamed of. A place for free men to live and be happy. And a home for you and me. Oh, my darling, my darling. What's that? It sounds like everyone is gathering outside. Oh. Hey, Robert! Oh, the friend, please, the the oh. Robert Misson? Yes? I am Captain Dijon of the French Navy. Oh, Captain, I am Ribot. I sent you the message to land. I kept Misson occupied so that you could land without risk. He is wanted by the King of France for murder. There is no King of France, monsieur. There is no King of France? No King of France? On the 14th of July, Citizen Misson, the lilies of France were replaced by the tricolor. France is a republic. <laughs> Those of you who wish to remain here under Governor Misson may be citizens in the new republic. Those who wish to follow Ribot and the rest of the aristocrats to the guillotine may fall in line. I, an aristocrat. I, citizen Ribot. <laughs> Are there any other aristocrats on this island? No, only this one, who is my promised wife. Yes, citizeness Marianne Misson. You are to be his wife, mademoiselle? His wife, his follower, his love. Wanting you every day, I am wanting you. Every night, I am longing for you. In 
that heaven I'm dreaming of. Oh, Alexander, darling. Oh, Julie, darling. Alexander. Julie. Alexander. Look, darling, the moon is new. Turn your back on it and wish. Oh, darling, I have everything I could wish for now. Wanting you. Nothing else in this world will do. In this world you are all. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. And this is Gordon McRae giving a special vote of thanks to our guest stars, Miss Nadine Connor and Mr. Rudy Valley, and to Joe Kern, Sandra Gould, and Paul Fries for their fine performances in our production of The New Moon with book and lyrics by Oscar Hammerstein II, Frank Mandel, and Lawrence Schwab with music by Sigmund Romberg and adapted for radio by Miss Jean Holloway. Well, next week our star-studded show train will arrive on the same tracks at the same time. And on board will be William Bendix, Doris Day, and Joan Edwards to join me in bringing you George Gershwin's Girl Crazy with our chorus under the direction of Norman Luboff and the music arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. All aboard! Looks as though we're ready to pull out. So until next week, goodbye. The New Moon has been presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae appeared on this program by arrangement with Warner Brothers. This is Marvin Miller speaking. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by 132 railroads of the United States. Each one of them has its own operations and services. Each one competes keenly with others for business. But all of them work together through the Association of American Railroads for the improvement of all railroading and for better service to you. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.